Well, hello, welcome to DIY Design by CCW, and thank you so much for clicking on my video. Well, today I'm going to be doing a DIY for you, one of my favorites. Uh, I'm going to be making over some glass pieces. I have a thrifted ginger jar vase, uh, I have these three Dollar Tree containers, and I'm going to be doing some painting, but with a twist. I'm going to be mixing two of my favorite shades of blue, uh, and we're going to see how this turns out. One is a satin uh, multi-surface paint in Ink Spot or Royal Blue, and the other is more of a brilliant blue, as I call it. I may also use some of this uh, silver, sterling silver in a multi-surface paint, but we'll see. And uh, before I do anything though, the first thing, if you're gonna paint glass that you wanna do, and I'll do this off camera, is clean the outer parts of your pieces or any surface you plan to paint with alcohol. That will help your uh, paint to adhere. All right, so for mixing uh, this color, I'm not doing it scientific, I'm kind of eyeballing it. And as you can see, I've put some of the lighter shade of blue, and I, I call it Brilliant Blue, but again, I'll put the name of the paint down in the uh, description box, and I'll also see if I can link folk art paint uh, to the video. That way you can purchase it there, or you can purchase it in my Amazon shop, and you'll find uh, that in my description box as well. Now this ink spot uh, is a satin finish paint and the other paint is a metallic paint. And what I found by mixing the two together, not only did it change the paint color, but it also changed uh, the consistency of the paint and really gave it a little more pigment. The metallic paints tend to, you know, they, they don't cover as well. They're a little more translucent, but by mixing the two shades, um, two types of paint, I found that I got a lot better color or coverage rather. Um, now, if you're new and you haven't done this before, or you haven't watched one of my videos before, I will tell you that you're typically gonna do two to three coats when you do something like this, just to get the look and the coverage that you want. You don't wanna overload the paint, especially in that first uh, coat, or you will end up with streaks. You wanna use a brush that is made for acrylic, now I'll put the name of the brand I prefer down in my description box, but you know, you can find these brushes really anywhere. Uh, Walmart sells a great brand. Um, now I also buy mine at Joanne Fabrics as well as Michaels. So here you see I'm doing the vase. Now lately when I've done these ginger vases, I have left the tops clear. It's just a look that I like, but you certainly can paint the entire vase if you like. Now, I also paint the bottom of the vase too, just to give it a, a more finished look. So again, don't expect that first coat to look that great. Just try to get it on as even as possible. Keep your brush strokes as even as possible. Don't overload it. Let it dry, you know, an hour or at least in between coats and, uh, you know, then let it dry uh, and before you begin your embellishments. Now, for these pieces, I'm going to work with mostly just about all silver, I believe. I don't think I did anything else. I was thinking about adding a different color, but I ended up sticking with the silver. Now, all of these fabric trims, they do come from Joanne Fabrics, and I'll make sure to link the uh, information down in my description box. All right, guys, listen. I'm going to stop talking and just let you watch me do this. If you have any questions about this process, uh, please feel free to leave me comments uh, and I'll be glad to answer them. And uh, all right, I'll be back when we get to another part of the DIY.
All right guys, I'm back and now I'm going to go ahead and work on the vase. Now, uh, as you notice for all three of the Dollar Tree pieces, I decided to put the fabric trim at an angle just to give the piece of, pieces a little bit different look. Normally I go vertical and maybe a little horizontal, um, but I decided to make it, you know, do something a little bit different and we'll see how it turns out. Now for the vase, uh, I'm going to try and do, like I said, mostly um, I'll do something around the neck of the vase, as you see, or the maybe the waist of the vase, because sometimes I think of these vases, they sort of look like ball gowns to me. And uh, depending on how you look at it, the cinched in part is could be the waist, could be the neck, whatever. So I'm going to play around here with some fabric trims until I get the look that I want. And uh, then I'll also do a, probably do a vertical design as well. Now, when I started, I wasn't sure. Typically, I would do the vertical pieces first and then add the pieces around the neck or the belt area there. But um, in this case, I kind of did it backwards because I wasn't sure. But anyway, I'm going to stop talking, let you watch me do this, and I'll be back when we get to another part of the DIY. Alright guys, I'm back and uh, well, unfortunately, I didn't realize it, but I didn't, I wasn't recording when I placed these vertical strips on the vase, but I will make sure to link uh, a video in the description box in case you want to see the technique and how it's done, but it's really simple. Basically what I do uh, is lay the vase on its side so that I can, you know, get a clear visual uh, that kind of helps me to get um, the the pieces straight. If you're doing, or if I'm doing more than one strip, I always start with the middle strip. And uh, again, I'm just using my normal E6000 quick hold glue. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more uh, embellishment to the vase. Um, I sometimes when I do this kind of look, I will add the vertical strips to both sides, but today I'm just doing it as a focal point on the front of the vase. Um, and But I will go ahead and add some more of the rhinestone trim around the foot area. I'm also going to maybe do a little more work around the neck area because you know what? I can never get enough bling. I'm usually a little bit teeing too much. And uh, then I'll also add a brooch. And if you're new to the channel and you wonder, you know, why I do that, the brooches to me are like my focal point of my pieces. And many times when I do a design, uh, or I'm thinking about a design, I'll start with a brooch and then work from there. So, all right, so as I'm finishing up um, the, the last touches to the vase, I do wanna share uh, some exciting news with you. First of all, I wanna thank all of you that have been following this channel and that support me because this channel just passed 25,000 subscribers. Now, I started out 
a couple of years ago just doing these videos for my family and my friends and I never ever dreamed that the channel would grow to that point so I thank you so much I also want to thank the channel members those of you that have been patiently waiting as I try to come up with uh, content for the channel members and and they are uh, channel members are Kim DMS, H.J. Rennie, Shanta, Lori, Sherry, and Kim, I really thank you because you've been, you were the original channel, channel member, and uh, you've been, you know, been with me the longest, but I appreciate each and every one of you, subscribers, members, and uh, I really would like, if you would, let me know in the comments if there's some videos that you'd like to see or if there's some other DIYs that you'd like to see me try. I'd really love to hear about it. Now also um, for channel members, I am going to be starting a Facebook <clears throat> member group where we can, you know, chat and talk and uh, I'll be leaving that information down in the description box as well. And um, all right, I've talked enough. I'm going to go ahead and finish up this vase for you and or let you watch me finish the vase and I'll be back when we get to the next part of the DIY. Alright guys, so before we get to the final reveal, um, I do want to just share with you, in case you're new and you 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 know you haven't watched my, my videos before, uh, typically for my pieces to make them versatile, to use them, you know, for storage pieces, I also I, I usually always make lids. Now for these pieces, uh, I kept it really simple. I'm using these acrylic discs. Now I'll make sure to link um or try to remember rather to link this product to the video but they're also available in my Amazon shop and I really like this particular brand because it has the uh, film that protect the acrylic you know while it's being shipped to you uh, it has tabs to make that film easy to pull away and you'll notice I have glued to the disc uh, a little bit of uh, trim a little close chain wrap and if that fit if I leave the film on it does help you know keep from getting any excess glue on the acrylic because once you get it on the acrylic it's very hard to get off now I'm just using some acrylic door knobs uh, as my knobs and voila this is the final reveal this is what the set looks like now let's take a closer look at everything there's a little bit closer little bit of a closer look at the dollar tree pieces there's a look at the vase that i really like um, again i really do like this blue um, i wanted to you to see the color so i'm just showing it to you on a plain white background but in a couple of days i'll make sure to use it in a tablescape and kind of dress it up a little bit and um Again, let me know what you think. I really like this set, but I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. So again, if you're not uh, a subscriber, I hope you'll join the channel today or subscribe to the channel today. Again, thank you so much to the channel members. And please visit my other channels, if you will. Uh, Tablescapes by Candy and the Glam Decor channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.